Before I forget, and still, if we're over here, it's a question. If you're looking for an MI, what leads will you look for? Which leads you will always check? So which leads, if I'm looking for a STEMI, ST elevation MI, which leads I will always look for? Which lead is the most important one? And don't be afraid to ask. Like uh, one of the six chest leads. Okay, so there's idea one of the six leads. That's a very good idea. But we have no time to go for this. This is a trick, tricky thing. Because remember, if you're having a heart attack and you're having a pain, you don't know where the, 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 the necrosis is located. You don't know where is the ischemia. And you know that the, why we are having 12 leads well because there's not a single lead that could see the whole heart you you're taking leads as a cameras that are pointing towards your heart so that's why if you're looking for mi you always have to check all the leads and you're looking in all the leads for st elevation so you have to if if you want to be sure there is no mi you have to rule out st elevation from all the leads okay because you don't know where the MI is located. Get it? But if you're looking for or ch trying to figure out the arrhythmia, what lead you will uh, check? Which one is the most important one for you? What do you think? With the same logic uh, as this, as we use for MI. I'm looking for arrhythmia only to describe the type of arrhythmia. Tell me. Don't be afraid. So, any lead is the good one, okay? Any lead. Because all the leads, although they're not seeing topical things, they are seeing the piece and they are seeing QRS and the timing of piece and QRS. So, any lead is okay, basically. You take the best one with the best graphical interpretation or and that's the one lead you need you need just any any lead is good because you you don't care about the st elevation or depression you just care where is the p where is qrs okay yeah get it so that's the thing you should think of good so so that was a tricky question and now let's get to the different we're going to go more although we i mentioned already many of them now we're going to categorize it a bit okay so we're going to get to the we're getting to pathologies and we're going to divide it make it in a groups and first so, so rhythm pathologies rhythm pathologies and we already mentioned some but first of all if it's a sinus rhythm it can be so sinus pathology, sinus rhythm, okay, and it could be, that means the SA node is uh, changing its speed. And it could be tachycardia, sinus tachycardia, or sinus bradycardia. If it's a sinus tachycardia, it's like 100 till 160, you know, you shouldn't go over too much. And the important thing is, as we said, there's a P, there's a QRS, which is nice and, and normal. And like the the sinus tachycardia is like, I don't know, like 100 to 160. Okay? Yeah? About. And this could be due to just activation of the sympathetic trunk when you're scared. Or there could be some drugs. You could be on drugs. You could be compensating, um, you know, in uh, let's say if you're having a hemorrhagic shock or whatever. Or if you're ha having hyperthyroidism. Okay? If you have high... Uh, thyroid hormones, uh, you're going to have first tachycardia, sinus tachycardia. And all of you remember from today, if you're having chronic thyrotoxicosis, so high thyroxine levels, you will sooner or later have AFib. This really much, it's like a direct way to AFib. 
okay, although the mechanisms are not so clear. If someone ha having high thyroid hormones for a while, he will end up with AFib. That's a, that's a one-way road, AFib. Remember, thyroid toxicosis, I will write it down, this is thyroid toxicosis leads to AFib at the end. First, you're having tachycardia, sinus, and then you're having AFib, okay? With the sinus bradycardia, again, it could be a trained uh, person, okay, or or he can do yoga and they they're, they're able to decrease the 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 pulse, or of course hypothyroidism, okay. So bradycardia, bradycardia, hypothyroidism. So decrease hypothyroidism, okay, and. One important, um, and, and the, the, of course, the, the beat can be so slow, sometimes you can massage, you know, how you can slow down, how you activate and trigger vagus to slow down the, the, the atriums, the SA note, by uh, carotid massage. If, you're, if, if you massage the carotid, uh, carotid uh, sinus, or if you put ice on, on a face, you can really slow down the slow down the pace very much, and this sometimes also happen if you have a if you're older and you're having a shirt, like tight shirt, or with a uh, you know if you buckle your seat and and the seat belt, the seat. yeah, seat belt goes across your neck. You can stimulate the the sinus so much that actually you can beat so slow you can have a syncope. And this is one type of syncope, so watch out for that, okay? And But the cool thing about this is what? And this is important. Remember, with the, you call these vagal maneuvers, stimulating a sinus or putting a ice on your face. And these are very crucial to slowing down tachycardias. But which ones? Only the atrial tachycardias. Because the autonomic nervous system only controls atriums if the tachycardia is ventricular no way you can slow down by these maneuvers so remember if the tachycardia is atrial you can slow if you massage the carotid sinus or put put ice on the face you can you can really decrease the pace you can control the the arrhythmias coming from the atriums you cannot control arrhythmias that come from ventricles by these maneuvers. Okay? Yeah? So remember that. Good. So remember, sinus, tachycardia, sinus, bradycardia. And I'll give you one special pathology, and that's called sick sinus syndrome. Sick sinus syndrome means that the, the SA node is sick. It's old, it's ischemic, there's a fibrotization. We don't know exactly the mechanism, but anyways, Suddenly, sometimes it just drops. It's not working for a sec or two, okay, or three or four. And what you see is that it's like this. I'm not drawing T's over here, okay. Today, majorly for the maybe for the whole light, I'm not not drawing T's, okay. Uh, I don't care about them today. So P and QRS, and now suddenly there's nothing, and then there is. Again, PQRS. So over here, you didn't see P, you didn't see QRS. And what this leads to, sometimes, typically in most cases, no problem at all. But if it's too long, this, let's say, laziness of, of the SA node, or uh, then you can have a syncope. What do you call the syncope again? Adam Stokes, okay? And this is dangerous. So when you're having Adam Stokes syncopes or attacks, that's dangerous because when you're driving a car, or again, climbing somewhere, you can fall down. Okay, so so watch out, Adam Stokes. Oh, but in most of the cases, they don't they don't have problems. They just, you know, they're they're missing one P and QRS uh, suddenly for a few seconds. Okay, it always depends how long is the uh, that the heart is not contracting. Okay, of course, if the P like. Uh, if the SA node like stops for too long, then the AV node will take off on and you won't see a P, but you'll see a QRS there. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're protected by the autonomy of the AV node. Okay. Or the junction area. Good. So, so these are the sinus rhythms. 
And then we're having the atrial rhythms. So atrial rhythms, or in other words, supraventricular rhythms. And we talk ventricular rhythms. And we talked about them already. So those are the ones which come from SA node, but are uh, come from atriums, but are not from SA node. So they're not from sinus. Okay. And and these are we talked about it. This these are supraventricular tachycardias. So first of all, we can talk about supraventricular tachycardias, supraventricular tachycardia. And what does it mean? There's going to be a P or, well, no, to be honest, in most of the cases, you won't see a P. It's masked somewhere, but you will see QRS. That's going to be very, let's say, normal. And you're going to see high frequency. So typically it's like 140 till 220. And typically you won't see a clear P over there. Uh, it can be there, but but doesn't have to be. And you will see like QRS complex there. Okay. I said I won't be. So there, there will be like lean QRS over there. Well, this this looks more like a AFib. So I'll, I'll do it once more. I'm going to do t's over here now ex uh, yeah ex uh, so this is a t t t t so this is a supraventricular tachycardia okay yeah faster beat than supraventricular tachycardia is the one we talked about it it's the flutter but watch out the frequency over here over here this this is a frequency of the of the heart of the ventricles as well, of the beat. Those so are beats per minute. But watch out, over here in flutter, atrial flutter, the frequency we're gonna talk about, it's only the frequency of the, it could be like 300 per minute, but it's the frequency of the atriums only. They contract so fast, not the ventricles. That's why the pulse is like pretty normal or it's faster, but it's, so, so basically if you're having a, if you're having a atrial flutter, it's going to be like three to one, let's say, you know, it's regular. So over here, these small ones, they're heading 200 till 300. And these are, these are the contraction of the ventricles. So it's three times less. Okay. So it could be like hundred beats per minute. That's, that's the beats you're going to feel on the, on the ra radial artery. Okay. Yeah. So that's flutter. And remember, as I told you, thrombus is a risk over here and also the D block that it will, it could turn into ventricle of, uh, ventricle flutter. Okay. Yep. So that's flutter. And the last one is AFib. Okay. So AFib, atrial fibrillation. And we talked about that you will see that it is totally irregular, okay? QRS is uh, nice, and sometimes you can call this F wave, like fibrillatory wave, it's not a P wave. And this could be like 300 or even to 600, but it's it, this concerts only atriums. The, so they're not contracting at all, they're just like, you know, fibrillating, okay? But the frequency of the beat could be like 80, for example. Thanks to the yeah, 80 beats per minute, if we talk about that, what you feel on the ra radial artery. But the beat is totally irregular. Okay? Yeah. So you should know sinus rhythms, okay, tachycardia, bradycardia, and then you should know supraventricular tachycardia. That's going to be always tachycardia, supraventricular, because there has to be something beating much faster than the other ones, okay? And flutter of the atriums and atrial fibrillation, okay? So, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.